movie's gonna flop Our mind's about to pop But enough of that noise Time for the B-roll, boys! Welcome back to another mother fluxing episode of B Roll Boys. This week we are doing 2005's Aeon Flux. I am your host, Justin. I'm joined by Harlan. I have nothing funny for you. And Wes. Hey, I have everything funny for you. Well, we watched Aeon Flux, <laughs> which is based off of an anime I didn't watch or know existed. Yeah, same. Never I, heard of it. I have to say. This intrigued me enough to where I do kind of want to watch the original series now. Really? I think the concept is cool. It's just, I, you can okay, see okay. that it's mangled in its execution, okay. but the seeds of something cool are there. Can At you... least after like the first 45 minutes, because that's boring as shit. Okay, because I was going to say, it was like around the 45 minute mark where like some some thing was revealed, and you guys were both like, whoa, that's really cool actually. Such Did you pay the... attention to a second of this? No, not really. <laughs> Me and Justin <laughs> were both on your there. phone for like, 40 per, <laughs> like 90% of this. Uh... Yeah, I was pretty bad about it. That's my bad. But um, yeah. So why don't you explain it to me? Wow. <laughs> so essentially, it's it's kind of like Children of Men a little bit. Mm -hmm, I got in that. In that, yeah. uh, people have they got infertility as a result of some vaccine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before that, in the the distant future of 2011, some kind of virus happened. I guess COVID. Ooh, big COVID. Ooh. To, so I don't have any trivia for this, but I did read that um, I think somebody asked the writers like where the, the virus came from, and they said it was from GMOs. Oh, okay. Well, so yeah, we've got some anti-vax and anti-GMO. Great. Now sentiments. I don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, I don't know the, if that's from the writers. But the whole the crux anyway, of but... this is that people are infertile, so what they keep doing is in this giant dick blimp that floats around, they just clone the same people over and over again. And, like, you'll clone somebody and then basically educate your younger cloned, like, Boba Fett self as far as what your life is. And it just, you sort of daisy well, chain lives together like that. Only, like, the board members do that, though. Everyone else doesn't know they're clones. Oh, yeah. Everyone else is just kind of shuffled through. Society. Yeah, they, uh... <laughs> It's kind of like Stardew Valley, yeah. but everyone just kind of shifts hats every, like, <laughs> lifetime or so. Yeah, they literally have respawns. Well, because, like, all the coroners, they just take the DNA from the dead bodies and inject them into people, and then they get pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. So that part's pretty cool. It explains it a lot better in the movie, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I thought that part was pretty pretty cool, actually. I'm still we, raising like, an eyebrow. We were sitting there, like, normally we just, like, you know, cut up and make fun of the movie the whole time, but during that, Justin and I were sitting there like, huh. That was the five minutes where I was like, oh, this is kind of intriguing. I at least conceptually like where this is going, but the rest of the movie mm -hmm. is such a slog, and it's... I will say, I think this is the worst edited thing that we've watched. I think it's the worst ed editing that I've seen in anything ever. It's... So incomprehensible. Like, pop music videos are edited better. It's one of those, like, classic... I, where they just... There's too many cuts to illustrate very simple actions. Yeah, I, I remember at one point, like, she, she beat up some dudes, and then, and, then, and then all the dudes were beat up, and then everything was calm for a minute, and then one of the dudes got back up for a second, and she just punched him in the head once, and he, and he was back down. And for that single punch, there were three cuts three cuts just for one punch within like a two second span <laughs> yeah, this is like the dark knight times a hundred like every action scene there's like 200 edits like when you have more, good probably. action movies like the raid part of it is you know that they actually had real choreography that they practiced mm -hmm. and was good so they didn't really cut all that much like in your e2 movies do that shit too like if you watch the revenant there's not a whole lot of cuts in that or birdman where they try to simulate having no cuts whatsoever but that's not an action movie. Still, this has no choreography, so it. I don't know. This kind of looks like a. As far as like the movement, it reminds me a little bit of like Gary's mod, <laughs> where everything <laughs> looks really unnatural and like. I don't. I don't know how else to describe it. Just like like the like, world itself. I just mean like the movement of the characters because everything is so unnatural in video game. Look, it almost yeah. is like a really bad, like like the shittiest possible version of the Matrix. Yeah. As far as movement goes, like even when she's just walking, it looks really unnatural. 
Well, that shines the most when they're actually infiltrating like the headquarters of the town. There's only <clears throat> one town left, by the way, like on the entire Earth, and everyone lives there. Yeah, it's kind of like and Attack it, on Titan in that way. That yeah, this came so first, so they keep cloning themselves to find the cure for uh, the infertility thing, and this like rebel group is trying to attack basically the main base and. <laughs> that was probably the funniest part of the movie when they were going through like all the obstacles to like get to uh, like the bad guy because the movie actually starts off pretty quick. That's one thing I appreciate about it. It just kind of gets going. Yeah, it does. And like, then stops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it stops for like half an hour. I mean, it definitely the I guess the the pacing quote unquote wasn't really the problem. It's just that I had no clue what was going on until about halfway through. Yeah, when they finally give the lore dump of. And a lot of movies will do that where they try to have some sort of mystery or intrigue right off the bat to kind of keep you hooked. But there's too many of those too quickly. And I didn't know what was going on until, A, I had to look at the synopsis about 30 minutes in. And then shortly after that, one of the characters sits down and is like, look, this is what the fuck's going on. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah. I kind of get what he just has like a bond now. explanation for like five minutes and then we get it. Yeah, that, that could be fine. That can work as long as the stuff you know, leading up to the reveal is, is entertaining and comprehensible. But, but like, there's none of that. Yeah, like we said, like like yeah, I, I you can you can show me a mystery and I'll be like, okay, I can I can wait and, and find out what's going on. But like I need the action scenes that lead to the reveal to be entertaining and I need to be able to understand what the fuck happened. Cause like anytime there's an action beat I'm just like along for the ride and then it's over and I'm like, oh I, I guess they're okay and, and these guys aren't okay. I, mean, I don't know how that happened, but the action was the best and the worst part of the yeah. movie, and that's yeah. so it's so horrible on every level that makes it kind of awesome. It is kind of entertaining, yeah, in that way. I, this like, is sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. No, I was just no, gonna no, say no, it, it's, go. it's it's really cheesy action. Um, I just wish there weren't so many cuts so I could like follow what's actually happening better, you know, because otherwise this would be a much more entertaining movie if I could just follow the cheesy action. Yeah. yeah, if this was cut better, it would kind of be like a third-rate Matrix in the action scene. Yeah, it'd, it'd be exactly. like the third Matrix. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, this, this is the segment that got cut from the Animatrix. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's how, like, off this is. But I just like how they're going through, like, that obstacle course. It's like a garden outside of the building. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you want to touch on monkey feet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so she sh- yeah, they show up to the Pentagon or whatever, right? And then, and then this bitch shows up, and she's got, like, hands for feet, okay? And that doesn't really seem to be for any reason. Yeah, that's, well, never, that's never explained. Well, it, just... it is kind of like in one line. She's like, oh, you got the upgrades, huh? And she's like, yeah. And then that was, that was like, it. <laughs> okay, How's an sure. upgrade? Well, I, don't know I if feel like a... that would weigh throw off your balance. She didn't say upgrade, but it was something like that, like modification. <laughs> sure. modification you got the or... DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She had her feet switched off her hands for some reason. Yeah, and, and it looks really goofy. Um, like, she's basically just, like, a third-rate beast from X-Men. Um, and, and they're, like, running through all the obstacles. And, like, I have no clue what the fuck was happening. Like, there were, like, trees that had, like, these, like, pineapple things they that, like, like shot hives. needles out. And, like, what, what was with that? I guess it was, like, some sort of security measure, but they looked like beehives that are kind of gun turrets. Yeah, but, and, and, like, literally, it w- they would, like... It would show them, like, jump up in the tree to, like, take them out of the tree, I guess. But then, like... It, like, angle them towards each other. Well, and there's, like, a separate shot of, like, yeah, them, like, shooting out their, their, their little darts or whatever. And then there's just a shot of, like, them running on the ground. And you hear, like, the... Of the, the darts. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I... It was too early in the movie. It was like five minutes in for me to be like, "What the fuck is going on?" It like not even in the in you know the grander sense of this movie, but in just the context of this specific scene, I don't know what the fuck is happening. There's a lot of little shit like that that's so fucking weird. Like um, so all of the resistance people, what are they called? The the Moroccans, the Monacans, <laughs> the Monacans, Mon- 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 <laughs> Because I kept I thought they I kept thinking Mohicans? that they were saying the Mohicans. <laughs> no, it was and I was like, I think it was Monacans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flex I, I had the to last. Stop of the Mohicans. The Mohicans a lot too. Um, no, I was yeah, too busy but, cheering for Dick Blimp. <laughs> there's there's a lot of like scenes that just have no consequence. Like okay, so so Monkey Hands girl, <laughs> she's mm-hmm. like, um, you know, they're like running, and and then like I guess the grass can like harden 
and to where the it, like it's essentially just like a million like tiny little knives yeah, knife gland. and yeah knife and so, so they're like so they're like they're, they jump and then the grass hardens and turns into knives and then and then monkey lady like lands on her bare hand feet <laughs> and, and like it shows like that that each blade of grass impales her feet and like they go all the way through but then she's just fine. Like she's walking around like normal. She doesn't seem to be bleeding. The rest at all. of the movie, it's like it didn't even happen. Yeah, like they they made a very clear point to show like she got fucked up on her hand feet. But then it hand was feet. It, nothing. And came she from that. she was also in Ace Ventura when nature calls. And you picked that out. I don't know how I did that. Like wait, <laughs> I'd say I don't think I've ever seen this actress I, in anything. I know your face. <laughs> <laughs> And then I had to go on IMDb to confirm it, and I was fucking right. Oh, so I guess the whole goal of this is... So, obviously, our main character, played by Charlize Theron, is... Who I think is, like, the only real, somewhat big actor in this. Yeah, There's the guy that one. played Celeborn in Lord of the Rings. That's the only ever other thing I've seen him in. I've... But And he's, like, the... I guess the other lead, like the male lead, but it's these two yeah. brothers that they're the ones that are trying to find the cure for the infertility. So they keep cloning themselves and coming back, but they're supposed to be like the head of this big organization that the rebels are taking down. And then Charlize is supposed to go in and kill one of them. Kill, I guess it's the older brother. And then it turns out that they were husband and wife and like one of their past incarnations so they they fuck. get like fan- they, they get like phantom and- memories of their previous versions of themselves. Yeah. And apparently that happens to everybody but no one really knows why. They just say the government's like, "Oh, it's just dreams. Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I remember there was one line from some throwaway character I don't remember the name of or I guess never knew the name of where it's like, "Oh, you you have the dreams. You have dreams about memories that you have never had." I'm like, "That's what dreams are." <laughs> I would dream, say, dream, I, dream. I would say a hundred percent of my dreams are things that didn't happen. <laughs> so, it's like, yeah, sure? that's what a fucking dream is. Your mind just kind of makes it. But <laughs> yeah, so that she's supposed to drop in and kill him, and then they fuck, and then she, I thought she killed him, but she didn't kill him. And well, because she got one her, of her phantom memories, and she's like, I can't kill him. There's some reason yeah, why her buddies think that she turned coat, so they try to kill her. And then the guy gets, like, ousted from his organization and his brother and all of them are trying to kill him, too. And then... A real Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great. Oh, yeah, and uh, speaking of... That part verbals, I didn't give a flying fuck about. It was the, the, the idea of cloning yourself over and over again that reminded me of Children of Men, a much better movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was cool. I mean, what's the point that they give up? You kind of got to appreciate their tenacity a little bit because, like... They've been at this for 400 years. Like, the whole reason they've been living in the city cloning themselves eight times over is because this happened in, like, 2011. And now it's 2415. And they've apparently they've been nonstop looking for a cure for this the entire time. Well, I guess it's because they're not living one, like, continuous life and doing this for 400 years yeah. straight. They're just kind of, like I said before, they're sort of daisy-chaining their lives together. And mm-hmm. then they, when they're shitty kids, they're like, all right, this is what we've done so far, <laughs> and this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And they're like, okay, cool. I've been playing video games to this point, so I'm just a dumb <laughs> little kid. <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess they're supposed to have kind of, like, ingrained latent memories which is um, okay. I mean, you can sell me on that. That wasn't the part of the movie that I found atrocious. It was a lot of the other shit. I will say, I think that outside of some pretty atrocious green screen at a few points, I'd say this actually looks pretty okay. I was su- okay. Good thing. I was surprised. I thought the green screen looked really good at some at some points. Actually, most of the movie, I, I thought it looked really good. It was really only only and again, I wasn't paying complete attention. Um, but uh, at the end of the movie was when it it looked really bad. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of shots looked really good. Yeah, yeah. Like for a mid two thousands like schlock, <laughs> this looks pretty okay. I mean, some of it looked better than Jupiter Ascending. That's not hard. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to the rebels, though, so it's good that they had their help at the end there for like the big end game. Why did they send Aeon Flux to kill him 
in the first do place. Do not ask me questions because I don't. Uh, <laughs> because I legitimately don't like know why. That's another thing that they don't really explain. Um, I was saying earlier with the rebels, they have like an implant in their back, yeah. and when they like dig into like this deep wound in their back, they can like touch this thing. And then they go into like a weird like matrix program where they can talk to each other. And but and they talk to this redhead lady. That yeah, I don't really understand. She looks like what brave. Her, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what her purpose was. It just seems kind of like they can telekinetically speak to each other, but that's not explained until like the last twenty yeah, percent exactly. of the movie. <laughs> exactly, because like you just see them in there dressed weird, talking to each other, and you just think, oh, they went to this place. Yeah, maybe this is like a relig- ritualistic like. Uh, Assassin's Brotherhood thing like a or whatever. Home base. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, it's the fucking Discord server. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't explain it until, like, I guess, yeah, the last 20 minutes when you actually see her touching it and then. Why? And, okay, so yeah, it's like an implant in, like, their back. So they have to, like, reach around behind themselves and, like, dig their thumb into their skin. Well, I guess it's there. So, like, if they get handcuffed or captured, they can dig in and then call for How help. How are you going to do that if you're handcuffed? Well, That's it's like, like your hands are behind your back. Your back. I, I feel like you could get to it. We're all trying right yeah, now. You could you all, could do that. I yeah, mean, unless they decide to handcuff you like this in the front, and then you're just fucked. That's true. I, but, I guess it depends on where exactly it is. On your well, back. You know, it looked like it was pretty high up. I don't think I could do that. I have ten fingies, right? I feel like one I, of them I, I could get up in there. I, I, don't, I don't. I'm trying. And I like with where I think it was. I, I really. Well, it was like in the smaller right, we, we, back, we, we right? Should, like we, right we here. We shouldn't post can, this on Instagram. I was I trying can, to do this. I can do it. I don't think so, man. Can you show me? Yeah. Yeah, get up and show him how you're just, like, digging into your back there. Like, if it's right here... Well, I thought it was a little lower than that. Like, it was, like, right no, here. No, I think it was well, higher. if you're handcuffed, you can move your hands, like, up and down. Yeah, like, especially her. I, guess it, fuck... depends, I guess it depends on, on how much slack is between your well, wrists. She's yeah, also handcuffed. flexible as fuck. She spent if half the like, movie big... crawling around like a spider. <laughs> well, yeah, if you've got, like, big ape arms where they're, like, six feet long each, then it's fine, I yeah, guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it if you have anchor arms. <laughs> If you could just play jump rope with your own arms. <laughs> <laughs> and also, all the rebels look like they're in My Chemical Romance. Oh, Dude, yeah. We've got yeah, some, like, Matrix cast-offs here. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like the very They're, be- like, the openers for Ramstein. So, in the very beginning of the movie, like, yeah, like, we see uh, Aeon is just, like, walking around somewhere. And then, yeah, like, fucking Gerard Way from MCR shows up and, and they, like, make out. And you're like, it's oh, like, okay. It's like the transfer of pill. But yeah, yeah, you see, like, yeah, like, he, like, spit a pill into her mouth. What was that? Like, because we see later that, like, you know, we see, like, an x-ray and, and, like, the pill, like, you know, explodes in her stomach. But then, mm-hmm. like, what what was the point of that? I'm sure that the Aeon Flux fan club is going to come after us for not knowing slash understanding slash paying attention during this. I think it was supposed mm-hmm. to be some kind of tracking thing. Because there's a point where the rebels are talking about like, oh, we still got like a trace of the pill in her. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's to kind of keep track. That's Maybe that's what allows them to enter their Discord server so they can talk <laughs> to each other in weird like white robes. But if that's the case, what was the thing on their back? You know, I don't know. Maybe it's like the button that you're supposed to put. Maybe you need both. Maybe you need to swallow the pill and press your little like back nipple to like that's... activate it. Because otherwise, you would just always be there. I don't know. <laughs> it's your push to talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The pill is oh. to log in, and the little button is to push to talk. Also, around that same scene, uh, really fucking funny. My favorite part of the movie. Uh, we didn't have context yet, we, and we wouldn't have context for a long time. Uh, but just, like, they're walking through the park, and this old man, you know, he looks like he's, like, 60 or 70, sees this, like, 10-year-old girl, and he just looks at her and just a single tear rolls down his <laughs> face. It was hilarious. Yeah, that, I... I that was when I was totally in what the fuck is happening mode, so I had no clue. We were in that to... mode for a long time. Yeah. I'd say about halfway through is when it clicked for me, and I was like, oh, okay, I or get it's like, this. Oh, I guess that may have been his wife or something, which would have been creepy. That got recloned. He's having Ooh. he's having like memories of her or something. Oh yeah, because Aeon's Cause... sister gets killed, and then he she finds like the baby version of her adopted, uh, like adopted slash given birth to by another family surrogate yeah yeah it's it's weird i'm not 100 percent sure how they do this and i'm sure that maybe that was explained they said something like they make women think that they're pregnant somehow so that they'll go in and get checked out and then that's when they implant the clone but it can just be any random person's dna 
Yeah, they're just kind of shuffle. They have the same like hundred people, well, and then they just shuffle yeah. them around through each other. That's how no one knows that they're clones because they secretly just injector them. <laughs> this is all going over my head, man. I, I had, I had to really stop myself because, like, I mean, for the first twenty minutes, like every every like minute, I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" And then I, I got kind of self conscious. I was like, "All right, I'm sure that's getting annoying to everybody else in the room." So I had to like tell myself <laughs> to shut up. <laughs> When I feel like I get to that point, I have to pause and be like, okay, I'm going to look at the Wikipedia. Yeah. Not that I care about spoilers for any of these fucking movies. Well, I, but... I kind of wanted to challenge myself to see like if I could like piece it together, and no, I could not. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the platinum trophy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the brains for this flex. movie. Like I said, I feel like the seeds of something cool are there. I mean, I don't know how the show was, but I think it was more it was better received than this. Yeah, it has almost an 8 on IMDb. This has like a 5. Like, that's that's pretty cool. So, I'm, maybe I'll end up watching it when I... Well, I'll check I'm it so out just because... Uh, but... When I looked at it, it was only like 16 episodes. That's a pretty slim watch there. Really? Yeah, it's like a weekend. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But... Let's talk about the wardrobe. Like, what what kind of style is going on in this that fucking very town? First, that very first costume she was wearing? Well, it's like, everything looks like it's, like, Middle Ages and futuristic yeah. at the same yeah, time. It's, it's, it's kind of like, like Fifth Element a little it's, bit. It's like a mix between, yeah, like, like Renaissance Festival and, and Rave, you know? <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of Stargate, if you guys have seen that. Like, every random planet that they go to with humans has, like, some kind of weird shtick like that. And it just really reminded me of that. Yeah. <laughs> It's like between Stargate and Equilibrium is like the style of the city. Some of those land better than others. And uh, it, it is kind of cool seeing shots of the city where like the entire rest of the world is a jungle. And then you just have this attack on Titan Town sitting there in the middle. Yeah. It's like a little bubble. <laughs> yeah. That house is the dick blimp. Dick blimp. Dick blimp. Dick blimp. Dick blimp. Dick. Oh, oh yeah. So- and the dick blimp is what houses the clone dna and just flies around the city yeah i don't think we knew that for a long time because like they kept like making a point to show this dick blimp flying around and we were like is that supposed to have some significance and like you guys of course like lost your shit every time it showed up (laughs) and then eventually it was like oh okay so a dick guy lives in the dick blimp literally and he's in charge of the clone the blimp looks like a peanut with like pantyhose hanging out of it (laughs) so it looks like it has just like a giant flaccid cock but the dude inside of it like piloting i guess I guess there's nobody else in there. He's like he the architect. Like... He's the dude in the Matrix, or he's like supposed to take the DNA and like assign it to different families. Yeah, I but guess. he's like the librarian. He's too. also dressed like a dick. Yeah, like he like, looks. Like, he's got like he's, a big foreskin. It's not even collar. that he's bald, but yeah, he's got a huge foreskin, like Bill and Ted looking collar <laughs> thing. And, and and the collar is like it's. I don't know how to describe it. It's like um, it's going up around his face, it, like his yeah, whole it's, head. Yeah, it's like it's like he's 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 turtling a little bit, you know, and yeah. and like. The tube itself, the tube collar is like wrinkly. <laughs> so like, it's like, I know we're fucking stupid, but I feel like anybody would look dude, at this no, and you see that it's a dick. You, yeah, you can't fucking not dick. see a dick. Like, that's a dick, man. Come Remember on. in Revenge of the Sith when the Obi Wan goes to Utapau and there's those like really tall alien guys with the the red like yeah, and they're garbs. like, and they're like it, corduroy it kind, skin. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it kind of looks. They, I do look like that to me, but it's kind of like. Captain Picard if he went hollow. <laughs> yeah, just everything in this movie is just so fucking bizarre. But I have, I mean, none of us have seen the animated show, but I can already tell that this is something that should never have been a- adapted to live action. Because mm. probably it all looks like this in the cartoon, but it doesn't fucking matter because it's a cartoon. Yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want in animation. But I was like, oh, I see some Last Airbendering going on here. Because I watched Last Airbender before I actually watched Avatar. I mean, I... Well, that no, that's not true. I watched bits of Avatar when it was on TV. And then, like, a year ago, I actually went through and watched the whole series. But... So I don't think that watching Last Airbender was enough to like scare me off, but mm-hmm. it it reminded me a little bit of like Netflix Death Note, which I'll probably pick at some point for this show. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And Fucking I still hate that. and I, I guess I still will maintain that I enjoyed the movie about five percent more than I enjoyed the show, <laughs> and that I didn't enjoy the show. And Death Note fucking sucks. I'm 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 a semi weeb, and I I fucking hate Death Note too. I could never get into it. No, I don't like it. Never I couldn't stand it. it. It was so much like convenient writing. 
I don't think like you would cool, like it, Harlan. A cool concept with like Good. some of the worst writing I've ever seen in anything. I hate Death Note, like legitimately. Tweet at Justin if you love Death Note. Don't tweet at me with anime shit. Tweet at Justin with anime <laughs> shit. I won't watch it. Uh, tweet at me and Harlan with anime shit. We'll watch it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't really say full wholeheartedly anymore that I don't like anime because I found animes that I like, but there's always like annoying ass things about anime that get on my nerves. There's always one, there's always at least one extremely irritating character, usually in the form of like being really weak or being really horny, and in Demon Slayer, the, those are consolidated into the same person. And. I don't know. I don't like the whole having to recap exactly what I just watched in a monologue. It's like, oh, he deflected my strike. I know. We watched it. Well, it's like them thinking tactically. It's like, okay, what would you be thinking about in this situation? They're not you know? thinking tactically. They're often screaming this at each other. Well, it, it depends. It's like, you blocked my strike. It's like, I know They're not often it. screaming it at each other. Usually it's an internal thing. Yeah. Yeah, but the, like, but am I that like, stu- am I that fucking stupid where I can't internalize what I just watch? It has to be like a laugh track in a sitcom where I'm too stupid to know when to laugh. Well, no, not exactly. But it's like the <laughs> character's thought process of how he's going to go about it is like, oh, this guy just did this. If I do this, you know, I don't know. I it doesn't bother me. I guess I'm just well, used to it. I hate yeah, it. I, I actively well, to hate me. It. To me, it's it's not offensive because it's usually like, I mean, yeah, I don't necessarily need it, but it's it's usually like just kept to ah damn he 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 dodged it well maybe i can do this instead and then they move on you know it's usually pretty short yeah it's experience. usually like the most obvious shit ever yeah well it depends depends on the anime some's worse about it but i think demon slayer is actually a pretty good example of them doing that and especially jujutsu kaisen i know i keep saying this and you guys are sick of hearing it but whenever they do that in there it actually feels like it's for a purpose I mean, I, I hated it in Demon Slayer. The parts of Demon Slayer that I like, I really like. And the parts of Demon Slayer that I don't like, I really don't like. And yet, but, you still fucking loved it. No, I still really right. liked it. It's just that I always, and I have to do this with every anime, I always have to, like, turn my brain off to the, sh- the really obvious, annoying shit that I don't like. Like yes. that, with these constant internal monologues that take forever and drag out the, like, pathetic runtime on some of these episodes i don't like it i i like demon slayer a lot especially the last 10 episodes i was like okay i'm like officially really hooked because i was about to i was about to quit out of it when what's his name zenitsu showed up but i'm, I'm gonna rewatch it uh in preparation to watch the movie with you guys so no, i should I line up about about with uh whenever you're done with it that yeah, sounds so, good i can't wait to watch that movie yeah Anyway, so anyway Aeon Flux. Flux. Yeah, so. Wait, what movie? What was this? <laughs> I don't know if I have much more to say about Aeon Flux, yeah, to be honest cares? with you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't take any notes for this movie. I never take notes for these anymore. Well, I know, but I, I just, just wanted go, to say, like, go for, and for reference, yeah. for me, who usually writes, like, a full page of notes, I didn't write anything. Well, because I used movie. to write notes and then talk about two of them and then just Let's, let the conversation Well, flow. much Let's, like Jupiter Ascending, it was just strung together through random bullshit. Can we talk about how the movie opens with her waking up? from a nap and she catches a fly with her eyelashes the yeah fuck what the was fuck was that, that about? yeah what was that there's <laughs> a lot of random shit oh yeah going back to like their secret like discord server like rebel thing there was one scene when they're like two of them was in there talking to like whoever the leader is you never actually see her and yeah, you like... never see her in the quote-unquote real world but i guess they pissed her off or something and she's like staring at them then a flower comes out of her mouth I and forgot about sp- and that. spits like poison at their face, or it looks oh, like yeah. it looks like spores. It looked like a tool music video. For there's a just like a like... bunch of random shit like that. After they infiltrated <laughs> the building, like from the knife grass, like bullshit. I'm uh, guessing that that's some sort of reference to the show that's better fleshed out in that. Maybe I guess like a a, a bone to throw to the the nerds that actually watch the show. And not to me, who didn't watch the show. I guess so. Well, I'll like, be. I'll just look at all this shit and be like, it's probably some really iconic scene in the show. And I looked at it and I was like, what? That's another great part, <laughs> though. Like, of, of the, aside from them infiltrating the place and like doing like all the stupid Matrix shots through the grass, um, she sees him and she like has like a phantom like remembrance of him. She's like, oh, I can't kill him. So she chokes him out, 
runs down the hallway, goes into a library. This octopus thing like attack attaches to her chest and turns into like a nightcrawler teleport vest. And then she's fighting the security guards and oh, then just yeah. like escapes. Yeah, yeah they, like, and then like... she do- ditches the vest. It's like that seemed pretty useful. <laughs> I feel like, like almost nothing in the first half of the movie has any effect on the second half. It's just a constant action scene for like the first half. Normally, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but yeah, normally that's a good way to like get me interested pretty yeah. quick. But like, it's just that yeah, it's so like once it hits that wall, it, it has. This it. has to be one of the most all over the place movies I've ever seen. I mean, I, I think it says something how we're how we've been talking for so long. And we're just now circling back to this stuff at the very beginning of the movie and being like, oh, yeah, what was with that? I just keep remembering weird shit because, <laughs> yeah. like, a lot of things just happen that don't make sense, like the the fly thing. Well, yeah, like, every, everything we already talked about is, like, was, like, towards the end of the movie, so it was, like, fresh on our brains, you know? And, like, the other shit was just, like, I forgot about because, again, it had no relevance to anything later on. Except oh. for Dick Blimp because we can't forget him. Of course yeah. not. And the but, ball trains. But it's just that there's so much, like, jargon that they throw at you right off the bat and, like... The movie, I guess, it starts in medias res, which means like in the middle of the story. So you're kind of just supposed to be along for the ride for those first little bits and then fill in the blanks later. But it's so much later that you fill in those blanks when someone actually explains what the fuck is going on. Yeah. That, yeah, a lot of these little tiny things that we keep remembering from the beginning is like, oh, well, that didn't have any relevance to anything else. And again, maybe this is better explained in the show. And I'm sure that this is just a a result of re- adapting a, what is this, 16 episodes into a 90-minute movie? Yeah. And that you're just, it's just like Last Airbender, where you're just going to cram in so much bullshit, probably to appeal to the fans and to, like, have some sort of, oh, here's a reference to this, here's a reference to this, this happened in the show, but, oh, it was, <laughs> it's like two seconds in the movie, and so it has no no significance at all. I, just, I like said feel... nothing stuck for me at all until about halfway through. Yeah, and um, the more we talk about it, I'm and feeling Dick more Blum. and more... Yeah, Dick Blum. I'm feeling more and more obligated to watch the cartoon because, like, well, Last Airbender and Dragon Ball Evolution, we're able to see just how bad the bastardization of the source material is, and now I have to know. Hmm. Like, was it the same way with, with this? <laughs> and that's why I'll pick Death Note at some point, so we can see bad source material made into something, I guess, on par bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's bad of, in different ways. I thought it looked cool. The Death Note movie was par for the course, but like, I Full Metal Alchemist is one of my favorite anime. Oh God! And, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but the Full Metal Alchemist movie on Netflix sucked ass too. I mean, I've, I've probably said this before. They they don't have a good anime. Was movie. it live action? Yeah. Really? It's really bad. Hmm. Real bad. I don't know about that. Isn't there an Attack on Titan movie? There is. I forgot about that too. Like is I saw. That good? I, I, no, I don't think so. There's oh, some that shame. are just japan releases like tokyo ghoul has a live action one apparently that's really bad too but a lot of anime does have a live action one you just probably never heard of it or seen it Hmm. (laughs) great yeah there's a bleach movie too anything else do we have anything else to say on on flux um aside from just like simping over dick blimp not really i don't have any trivia i couldn't find anything interesting oh um they threw in a fucking Wilhelm scream. That was great. <laughs> that was great. It was it was really weird too because like, what did we mention like right before it? Yeah. Like, didn't you say like, well, you haven't had a Wilhelm scream yet, and then like five seconds later it popped up or something like and that. It was a very front and center one. Like, it almost felt like they wanted us to notice it because like normally like a Wilhelm scream is like you know very much like a and you know not the focus of the shot kind of thing but this guy was like I, front and he was the focus of the shot yeah he like falls from from you know the top of the frame to the bottom and he's like ah! and that I, audio I was in the foreground i totally yeah. think that the wilhelm scream is usually supposed to be the focal point of that shot. like the lord of the rings so? and the star wars movies do that i fucking like, hate it it's I, not i think that was especially in the 2000s i felt like everyone was trying to be really funny by putting in the wilhelm scream i guess it kind of works because it's almost like this anti-joke we laugh at how we laugh at how lame it is but i don't laugh outside of tarantino like i I never hear that anymore the wilhelm scream yeah in terms of like movies now last i don't watch movies now last movie i heard in (laughs) was uh, with the ratchet and clank movie when did you watch that? Wait, there's a Ratchet and Clank movie. Mm-hmm. It had a Wilhelm scream. It had a, well, it had a Wilhelm scream, but then they acknowledged it. Like, like a guy what falls. What fucking kid that grew a guy, up on a guy Ratchet falls. and Clank is gonna care about? Well, I guess us. One, <laughs> one of the one of the henchmen falls. He Wilhelm screams, and then his other henchman buddies like Wilhelm. So they like 
directly oh, acknowledge like, that. Like, yeah. oh, wow. It's not That's... a funny end joke by all these editors, like, oh, I'm just going to put this in here. I, I just, it's, it's overused. The Wilhelm scream was recorded in like the fucking thirties for a spaghetti western. I don't even remember the name of it. I think you, why did they why did they choose I, that I, one? Okay, I enjoy myself a good Wilhelm scream, and I think you just hate it because you purposely seek out shitty movies so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's in good movies. I feel like these, it's uh, in fucking Lord of the Rings. That's and true. Well, it's I especially Pe- hate it there because Peter Jackson is like he was like a wacky dude, so he wanted to. It's usually like big film nerds like Tarantino that suck their own dicks and think that they're really funny. And like that's the only thing. And now, granted, I'm not like some maven of, you know, movies that are coming out now considering I see so few movies, especially after COVID. But the only thing that I can really remember in the last couple of years that had a Wilhelm scream, it's like Tarantino. And of course he's going to have that kind of shit in there because he needs to have every movie be a love letter to other movies. So that's like his thing. Tarantino gets a pass. Now I don't care when Tarantino does it because, especially in like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like that's just so drenched in, especially like old Hollywood worship. Anyway, well, it actually makes sense to be in there, in that one specifically. I'm fine with. I that. think it's in that one. I don't remember, but but he usually has like a Wilhelm scream. I watched Reservoir Dogs again recently for the 800th time and that one's got a Wilhelm scream. But it's like kind of in the background, so I don't Fuck know. Wilhelm scream. But anyway, uh, Aeon Flux, I give it a 4. 3. I'd say mm, 4 to 5, probably 5. That's too high. Is it too high? Okay. That's too we've high. we've given some shit 3, all right? <laughs> if Snake Eyes is a 3, this is at least S- Semi comprehensible. I want to say middle of the ground, just kind of blends. It's not. It's got good parts and bad parts. It evens out. It's just. I a, think at the very. It's least just a perfect herd right in the middle. The five. Uh, I, I think. think it's, I'm surprised to hear that. I think at the very least it was subpar. I think it's got more bad than good, but there's the seeds of something interesting there. Yeah, like the whole premise. Like we so, know. I guess I can't give it good points for the premise because that's the original. only cool part yeah. of the movie. It has to be from the show. It has to be. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> but the lowest I'll probably give is a four, though. That's the highest I'll go. I'll give it a four. Okay. But, um... So we've got no trivia. But, uh... It's your turn to pick. So what are we watching next week? Well... Wait, we didn't say our good thing. Uh, yeah. Um... Dick blimp. <laughs> that's... Uh, I feel like that's a cop-out. I, I kind of like how this looks. I already said the green screen as well for most of it. I don't even mean just like the green screen. I mean like a lot of the style, like the architecture in this I think is really cool. And yeah, like, the, legitimately. The wardrobe is kind of hit or miss because some of those look really fucking stupid. But the arch- the locations and the architecture, even though I know it's all green screen, like it looks okay. Yeah, I, and I like how the, the town looks cool. in the middle of the jungle. Like that's cool. Mm-hmm. The location's cool. The premise is cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But those are good things. Like inside of Dick it. Blimp looks cool. Um, not practical, but it looks cool. Yeah. Well, none of this is like practical, but it it looks interesting. <laughs> I think, I it reminded me of Mirror's Edge. Part looks really good in this movie. I was very surprised by that. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. So what are we watching next week? Well, uh, I'm very sorry to forego the wheel once again. Um, I know you've all missed it, but it's I summertime. I missed the wheel. I, don't. I know. I know you did. I'm sorry. I know, I know you're hurting, but summertime. It's, it's summertime, and so we're gonna take a trip to the beach. Oh shit! We're gonna watch Jaws for the Revenge. Oh hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hate Jaws four. <laughs> 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 All right, I guess we'll see you next week right. for Jaws four. Peace. Jaws four, Dick Blimp, Dick Blimp, Dick Blimp, Dick Blimp. You're trash, bro. Hold on, you dig on multiverses?